welcome to the Traders Clinic, your regular shot in the arm of trader insights, philosophy and knowledge brought to you by two professional money managers, Ali Crooks and Charlie Burton. Each episode, we answer your burning questions along with our no-nonsense approach to all things trading. And coming up in today's show, well, we're back. We've had a little bit of a break. We're going to uh, be talking on an in-depth coach's corner. We've got your questions to get answered. But before that, we've got a couple of confessions. So non-trading related though, these. Okay, go on then. Because he, li Ali threw this at me literally 30 seconds ago, just before the cameras started rolling. So what is this then? So, well, we're back after the, sum after the summer break and I've had my fifth holiday this year. So I think I probably should do some work seeing as we're entering the last quarter of the year. But an important confession here, Charlie has got a new hobby. Well, uh, um, well the hobby is uh, waiting. I think that's what you're, you're referring to, the fact that I finally got uh, received my car, which I ordered 18 months ago. So that's been my hobby for the last 18 months. Waiting for your car. Yeah. Um, and I, I must say that um, it's prime time um, of buying a new car, what with everything that's going on in the, in the financial markets and the re economies and stuff. Interest so rates going up. That car's going to plummet in value over the next year or so. So, yeah, that waiting has really served me well. So not that it was my fault, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, when it comes to uh, things like this, if I go and buy a car or if I buy a house, you know that the housing market's probably topped or the top in these used car values um, has probably uh, topped out as well. So trading, fine, but anything else? Yeah, yeah terrible. The opposite. Terrible. There you go. Yeah. Good. So there's the confession. Oh, this. I mean, uh, you know, this whole thing about your holidays, though, you know, you've sort of gleaned over the, that quite nicely, really. I do think that this whole holiday situation needs to be calmed down a little bit. Well, maybe, maybe. But I did see some work. So I was trading and doing a few a few sessions with clients. So it wasn't a complete holiday this time. So it was good. It was enjoyable. So. Anyway, moving on yes. to our in-depth coaches corner, which I think is a really important one because obviously with everything that's been going on, we're filming this in late September. Um, the area that we wanted to discuss today was very much regarding all the volatility, all the drama, all the news and all the things that have been happening and how that impacts traders. So that was really the main focus of today's episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've seen a huge amount of volatility. Um, you know, euro passing parity with the dollar, all these things going on. Mm. And a lot, of the, a lot of people are coming to us saying, you know, what should I do? What should I do? They're reacting to the fact that there's been all this news and all this movement. And actually, there's some key things that we've discussed that I think is important for traders to realise. So Charlie's going to kick that off. Well, I think, I think the first thing to, to say is I wrote down some notes here saying, well, volatility is not your friend. It is your enemy. And yet your average retail trader will think, well, volatility, great, I'm going to get into the markets. And so we've seen that because we start to see people get excited because they yeah. see volatility in the bond markets, what's going on there, currency markets, stock markets, we're seeing it all over the place. And so then they want to get involved. And the irony is that what they should have been doing is being involved several weeks back and selling then if they wanted to be selling certain markets or whatever, not trying to come in now when it's all very volatile and the markets have already fallen a lot because then you're like, oh, you're, you know, yes, the markets could fall more, but you could very easily get caught up in all the whipsaw action that could go on right now. So, so often is the case, retail traders come in because they chase the excitement but they're not there when they should be there, which is yeah. when it's less exciting and then getting those positions set then. There's a huge, um, a huge psychological element to this as well, because you see exactly what you're saying is traders can switch off. Oh, it's summer or oh, it's been quiet or there's been a, a period where they haven't had a lot of trades or they've mm. had trades, but they're not really doing anything. And it's in those moments you've got to be prepared. It's exactly the same thing. And it's the, the whole the whole thing of FOMO. So mm. traders are sitting there thinking, I've missed out. There's all this movement. Well, it's easy to look at the, the, the big moves with the benefit of hindsight. But like you said, within that is all the volatility. But for, the, for me, if a trader is looking at that point, it's almost that it's too late. And what they should be doing is eyeing up the next, the next thing that they're going, to be, they're going to be looking at rather than trying to catch something that is essentially, potentially they've already missed. I think um, that comes back to, um, again, sometimes taking a step back when you're in the middle of an environment like this and saying, OK, I may have missed this at the moment. Now, it's different if you're an intraday trader because then they get really excited and they then, yeah. you know, but um, plan your trades out. Let the market come to you. So the market may be in a load of volatility right now. 
take that rather than think I've got to trade, I've got to trade, I've got to trade. Mm. Then ask yourself that question: What does the market need to do in order to get me to trade? So just ask these key questions, questions. Yeah. rather than just running around in your head thinking I've got to find something because I feel like everybody else is making money, like you just said to yeah. earlier on. And that's, I think that's the key is that there's this perception that everybody, everybody else is making money. Well, if you did a, a straw poll of uh, the clients I work with, some have had a really, really good period because they've had specific setups that are in line with uh, some of the trends that we've been seeing. And they've had a really good, really good period. But there are others that have you know, broken even or maybe not had such a good run because those type of setups weren't within the remit of what they do. Mm -hmm. So not everybody is making money at this point, but the, the average retail trader is, like you said, behind the move and is actually getting, getting hurt. You're speaking to brokers, a lot of people are not, are not in a good place because no. the utility has, has hurt them. Well, yeah, and, uh, but, and they don't need to. Uh, that's the funny thing. They, they don't need to get hurt, but they get excited. And mm -hmm. so what happens is the markets get more volatile and then that inner demon within us then is in our ear saying, go on, in you go, go on. Just yeah. up the ante a little bit, put more risk on because we can make more money, you know, yeah. and it's that whole thing. Oh, there's lots of volatility. I can make a load, a shed load of money. Yes, you can, but you can also lose a shed load of money if you get it wrong. So we have to even be more cautious in a way yes. in the middle of volatility because it can come back and bite you. And coming back to what you said, um, I think it's a natural thing that people with FOMO that you think everybody else is making money. And yet we see the stats. The reality is that it's, the, it's a smaller percentage of traders who are making money. Uh, the rest are not because they either get caught on the wrong side of the market. It always looks obvious after the fact. Oh, everybody's yes. been selling. No, it's not. Because when it's happening, people are seeing all sorts of reasons. Their stochastic indicator or whatever is oversold and they're buying and, and nothing wrong with that if you're using risk, proper risk management and stuff. But the problem is there's a lot of people don't use stops out there. Please use stops yeah. and use risk management. Risk a certain percentage of your account balance on trades because this is the number one thing that grates me what retail traders do out there yeah no stops or start over leveraging that's the one that is like i i'm gonna i need i need to make back what i haven't made because they feel as though they've lost something because mm. they haven't been in on the action and they they over leverage or do something or do something they shouldn't and the important thing here is that it's it's not the end of it's not the end of the markets it's almost i think some people's psychology is i've missed i've missed all that's going to happen or i've missed the best opportunity we don't know what's coming over the next six months mm. we're waiting to see what the market does and you're like you said look for the next move but it's easy to think you've missed you've missed some big opportunity but it's mm. the traders that have been grinding it out and trading through the boring times that have been able to capitalize from some of this volatility. I always say that in trading, this is an old uh, uh, um, anecdote from my martial, years of doing martial arts. And the, you, there was this old uh, uh, saying that you say, look, you know, you have to, if you've got a pot of water on a, on a stove, you've got to give it constant heat. If you, if you don't give it constant heat, the water becomes cold again. So in relation to training, and it's the same with trading that like you said earlier on, you know, people, in the like you like yourself you're off on holiday for half the year uh, but but when when the markets maybe are a bit quieter they're off they're bored and they're off doing other things but mm. it's those times are actually the times when you keep your tools sharpened because yeah. you are then then prepared for when these sorts of moves start to happen or or you might be executing starting to put position i was with my traders putting positions on back in August. Yes. So um but yeah it's it's frustrating because we want people to be at the grindstone all year long we want them to be as passionate as we are about yeah. trading because it, you, the more you are mentally engaged and invested with it then the more that you're going to be there at the right times but um, but right now it's fascinating who knows by the time the show goes out where the mark what the markets are going to be maybe they've calmed down a little bit by then maybe they've moved a lot more yeah but, um, and there are going to be countless opportunities. Just let the markets come to you. Yeah. Do your analysis. Coming back to what you said, yeah, we've made a bit of money over this last while, but you're only as good as your last trade. Exactly. And I've got, same with you, I've got a load of traders who will have been trading in the same direction I've been doing, and we've all made a bit. 
but there will be some of those using the same techniques who won't have been, if they didn't follow what I've been doing um, and they're doing their own thing, you know, they could just as easy have been on the opposite side of the market. There's that, I'm not an Elliotician, but there's that old phrase with Elliot, with Elliot waves, and there's nothing against Elliot waves here, but if you put 10 Elliotitians in a room together, ask them where the stock market's going next, you'll get 10 different answers. Yes. So you can have people using the same tools, but doing different things anyway. So like you said, not everybody's gonna be making money anyway. That whole fear of missing out and thinking everyone else is doing it, it's not just not true. So I, I, yeah, I think that that's, that's hugely important about the tools because people will think that, that they, they've missed out, they've, everybody else is making money. But like you said, even with the same tools, I think that's a really important point to end on. Even with the same tools, not everybody is making money in these current conditions. So yep. stick to your plans, stick to your rules. Okay, Brilliant. good. Good, so on, on to questions. Yes, so this is a good one. What's the worst advice you have ever heard a trader being given? Oh, man. <laughs> Shall I go with this one? Mine's a bit of a story. So, oh, I like a story. I'll yeah, just so, uh, sit back and um, enjoy I'm a name, I won't name names. I've never named names. But I was, at, I was asked to go to an event. A friend of mine said, oh, I've got, I've got this trader I know, and he's putting on an event, and he is amazing. He can literally predict which way the market's going. So I was like, here we go. Yeah. This one's coming. So I thought, I'm going to go along. So sneaked oh. along at the back, said hello to my mate, sat at the back and was just listening. And it was fairly standard stuff in terms of how to, how do you support resistance? I was listening to it. There's nothing, there's nothing new and the audience were very into it. There were a few things that... I've, I've just a little hunch. There was a lot of uh, Fibonacci involved in this. Hell of a lot of Fibonacci right. involved. Okay. Yes. Nothing so, against Fibonacci either. No, no. But yeah, I, now so I know who you're talking about. So people are getting slowly sucked in a little bit because what they're seeing is the usual before and after chart. So if you've got in here and then you've got out here, you'd be a gazillionaire, the usual stuff. <laughs> So I was thinking, yeah, yeah. And I was getting a bit bored and I was like, well, I'll stick it out. And I'm, I'm really glad I did. So I stuck it out to the afternoon and I'm sat there and somebody asked, somebody asked a question. Somebody got up and said, look, what, what would you recommend from a risk management point of view? You're talking about all these different patterns, but how do I actually place the trade? And I thought, good question. So I think the guy had obviously traded before. And the answer back was just go in at about 10 pounds a point and you will be all right. And if you could have taken wow. a picture of my face at that moment, I literally was just like, yeah, my jaw just hit the floor. Yeah. I looked back at my mate and I went, did he just what? say that? <laughs> yeah, did he literally just say that? So that was probably the worst piece of advice that I had ever heard anyone say out loud, just go in at 10 pounds a point. Uh, just to, because there may well be beginner traders mm. who won't understand the context of that, so you might want to yes. just um, explain Good that. point. So essentially what he was saying was, regardless of how much money you've got in your account, regardless of the size of, your, the, size of the stop in terms of points, just put a £10 a point trade on. So to put a context, if that person had a 100 point stop at £10 a point, they could have potentially risked nearly all of their account. Yeah. And this was prior to ESMA ruling, so this was when leverage was a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. You couldn't essentially risk your whole account, but you could wipe your account out a lot more easily than you can do these days. Mm -hmm. So what he was saying is, he was basically putting his finger in the air and saying, risk this amount, you'll be fine. Well, I mean, I guess it made his brokerage a lot of commissions by, uh, by telling the clients to do that. It, it could have done. I couldn't possibly say whether it did or it didn't. Yeah. But. Fortunately, we work, only work with good brokers. And so it's absolutely fine with our, with our sort of recommended partners. But, um, but this was from a... Anyway, and it was a good, it was a good lesson. It was a good lesson. That it doesn't matter what you teach somebody in terms of technicals. If you're going to, if you're going to be risking a blanket amount per trade, regardless of percent, then yeah. it doesn't matter what system that was. I mean, what he was, what he was teaching was, was fairly, fairly basic stuff. Mm -hmm. But even if it worked, half that room could have lost their entire account just because they'd had two or three losing trades. So yeah. that was probably the worst piece of advice I'd ever heard any other mm. trader give wow. to anyone else. Okay, um, I've got a decent one as well. Um, interesting. Probably this. not quite as exciting as your one, but um, uh, this piece of advice was offered by a trader who had been trading like best part of 20 years when I heard this piece of advice. And he said, uh, you can't go broke banking a profit. You can, ladies and gentlemen, you, you really can. can. Yeah. And so, so people that use that to justify why, you know, what they're banking a profit. Um, but if you bank a one point profit every time, but you're risking a hundred points, 
very quickly you're going to go broke. So it's one of the worst pieces of advice I've ever heard because you can go broke banking a profit if you don't run your winners enough and you're yes. banking them way too early relative to what your average stop out is. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you know, unless you're right 100% of the time, which no one is, or 99% of the time even, you're going to crash. So one of the worst pieces of advice that I've heard, but then again, I have heard of a load more, but I thought I'd just no, I like that. And I think what's what's interesting is you, you, you've got the example there and you've got a trader who's been trying to run his trades, his or her trades, you know, going for bigger, bigger risk to rewards. They hear that from a so-called expert and suddenly they change their approach and they're trying to bank tiny amounts on the trades that they should have actually been running. And then they have a, a losing run and they're in a they're in a mess. So, yes, mm. really good one I like that. OK, where are we now? Are we so there? I think we are done for this episode. Okay. So hope that was useful for you guys out there. Um, and as always, these are very volatile markets. Please trade safely out there.